Today, the focus of this lesson is on true shapes. And for true shapes, we will be exploring prisms. Now, a prism can be considered to be a geometric solid with identical bases. Those bases can take whatever geometric shape. So you can have a triangular prism, a hexagonal prism, depending on whatever geometric shape will make up the ends of that prism. Um, the sides of the prism will usually be parallelograms. So depending on the geometric shape, then the sides will be parallelograms or rectangles. And we know that a rectangle could be considered a parallelogram as well. Uh, today's lesson will focus on representing one of these prisms and also cutting that prism so that we are able to represent the true shape of that prism. Uh, as per usual, I will go through these steps in different colors just to make the effort to make things a little clear, clearer for you. So the first thing that we will be looking at today then will be the prism and this prism based on the end is hexagonal in shape. So you can see the parallel lines representing the sides and you can see the rectangular shapes that would be representing those sites. Uh, this is a three-dimensional drawing done in isometric in this instance. And once you have this, I'll just do a little representation here to demonstrate to you how the cutting plane would look in this instance. So here, you should be able to see the blue lines representing the cutting plane. So imagine that we have sliced this prism at some point and once you have cut the prism then you would be seeing this shape representing that face that you have cut still hexagonal but you know that because of the angular cut the hexagon is not the same hexagon that you would have seen in the original shape for the prism now we are concerned then largely with what what would have been left back so in this instance what is left back then would be the red portion so if i take out the construction lines initially as well as the cutting plane this shape is the shape that would have been left back and it is this shape that we are concerned with so we're now going to look at representing this shape as an orthographic drawing um, in this instance then the orthographic layout of this shape would start something like this we are concerned with the hexagonal shape that we are seeing here so whenever you have these drawings to do the view that represents the actual shape of the item should go down on your page first so I have represented here on this end view the hexagonal shape you would note that there are also the projection lines are going in so when I represent for you now the outlines of the drawing then given this pictorial shape you should be able to see the representation a little more clearly of what this would look like showing a front end and plan I'll take out those construction lines for you so that it is a little clearer as well so now you have an idea of what the front end and plan of this item would look like now remember I said that we want to produce the true shape so for these drawings you will usually need to have a reference line and that reference line is referred to as the XY line the XY line in this instance is represented with this line I represented two of them uh, we'll talk about them as time goes on but this line is referred to as the XY line on the drawing. Um, it looks a little short now that I'm looking at it, but um, 
nevertheless it will still serve the purpose that we want it to serve so you have the x-ray line in position and everything that you will do from here then will be referenced to the x-y line we know that we want to get the true shape of the cut face and that true shape can only be gotten if you imagine that you've positioned yourself at 90 degrees to the cut so this is the cut face right here so you would want to be positioned at right angles to this cut and this cut incidentally is at 45 degrees so you would want to be positioned at 90 degrees to that 45 degree cut so that you can look at that face straight on and determine what that face is supposed to look like. So we can project those 45 degree lines and once we project those 45 degree lines then the construction starts to look like this. There are three lines in the front view therefore there are three lines that are projected up the page. And here now is also the new XY line uh, at 90 degrees to the projection lines or parallel to the cut face. Now, so this line mirrors this line down here. To plot now the points that will give you the actual true shape of that cut face, you will need to transfer measurements. So each corner of this hexagon that is represented in your plan can be referenced to the XY line. What will happen then is that you will measure or take your compass and get the distance from the XY line to each one of these points. And you will go to the XY line to the corresponding line. For instance, this corner is represented by the corner at the top here in the front view. Therefore, the point represented on this line will fall on this projection line in the true shape view. So we know that any measurements relative to these two points here will fall on the line going across here. So you would transfer them from the XY line, those measurements, and they would give you the two points that you would need on that line. And you do the same for every point on the drawing. There are corresponding lines that will represent where those points will fall on the true shape view. So once you have done that, then the next stage should be to have those points put in place. Remember that you're transferring those points. So once you're transferring those points, then you should be able to see those points in position, representing the same distance from the XY line that you would have had in your plan. Then you're representing those same distances on the drawing right now. And once those distances are in position, then all you would need to do is to connect those points with a straight edge. And that would give you the actual shape, the actual true shape of the cut surface. Well, I keep making this little mistake here all the time. But that would give you the true shape of the cut surface on that view. That view is looking at 90 degrees to the cut face. Uh, this is orthographic projection. So as such, you would remember then that you have to label the views, front view, plan, end view. And this view would also be labeled true shape. You would label the XY lines as well. So you should be able to see those XY lines on the drawing. Uh, I didn't block the page for this exercise today simply because I want you to see and follow everything all at the same time. So now that we have seen everything, I can just throw all the lines back in. So you can see the construction lines in place now, helping you to get to the true shape. Um, you can see the actual shape of the prism and the face that has been cut. So this is a good overall representation of what you would be required to produce in this instance. We have looked at a prism today, but you should un understand that this construction then will also serve for a pyramid. A pyramid would have a geometric base again, but triangular sides going to an apex. We will address that as we go on, but certainly the steps will be 
basically the same as have been represented here today. So I hope that you understand. I'd just like you to take the opportunity to practice a little bit again so that if you have to look at a question in a multiple choice paper or if you are asked to draw at some point in time manually or in CAD that you would be quite easily able to represent what is needed uh, and gain maximum marks at the end of the day. Thank you for your time today and I look forward to bringing you another presentation pretty soon.